Murders, mysteries, unexplained stories, and our family's crazy opinions on them all. Join us now. The Family School of Thought is in session. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to another week of the Family School of Thought. Um, hopefully everybody's having a good week. Um, Cass, what's the weather like for you out there? Um, it was very rainy and cold today. It was like 30 degrees. Um, but yesterday was like super warm and sunny. So it was really kind of like sad today, but we were like, oh, it's spring. And then it just downpoured today. Okay. Yeah. Jess, how about you? How's the weather there? As always, 90 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday we got some snow early in the day and then yeah. I, I had like uh, work shoes, you know, dress shoes on. And when I came home, there was just enough snow on the driveway so i thought i'll shovel this so people have to walk with it and then it was like total ice underneath so then, yeah um, oh no yeah 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 i'm ready well, for well days. saturday was nice and or was it saturday um saturday what day was what, well what day we had like 60 degree weather and it was beautiful saturday well, yeah. saturday it started out really nice and we went to rochester hills and then no that was sunday Oh, Sunday. And then it got really cold while we were there. Yeah, Sunday, is, it started out warm in the morning and it got colder. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it did. Yeah. I froze. Yeah. Okay, Jess, you want to start us out with a fact? Yeah. Week? So I have a couple. One Matt and I saw yesterday, but we, and he threw it away, so I don't have the paper, but I remember it because okay. it's like a steel trap up here, right? <laughs> um, so... The North Pole does not have a time zone. Did you guys know that? No. Yeah. So you mean well, like time, like, time never changes or like so we were we were like super intrigued with it. And again, these it's so these are from the mental floss amazing facts calendar. They don't give a ton of additional information. So we looked it up and so we were very intrigued. We're like, what does that mean? Like how do they tell time or what you know, where do they use? So based on, you know, like what country claimed that territory of the North Pole, you use that, that time zone, or you use like a marine time, um, time zone. So basically, so like if you're from the United States or, you know, like, well, obviously the United States has what, like three, four different time zones, but you, you just go to whatever that claimed territory is. You use that time zone. So, so, so if, somebody that is in the next territory could be on a completely different time zone. Is true. But I mean, like, so, like, say if I, so I went to the North Pole mm -hmm. and uh, my buddy from like England went to the North Pole and we both were there at the same time, we'd be on different times? No. So, because they have different, like, up in the North Pole, they have different areas or territories that are claimed by countries, like kind of like the moon was claimed by the United States, okay. kind of thing. It's just like people put up a flag of claimed territory. So, it's so just, territories yeah, so. have time zones; they just don't have a set yeah. time zone. Well, I yeah, guess I right, exactly. Up. Yeah, yeah. So, or you can take it in a magical way, where like Santa Claus lives on the North Pole, and there's no actual time up there. And that's right? every day the is Christmas Day. It's Christmas a magical Eve. day. Yeah, magical yeah. year. So, but I also have another one. So that was the, the quick one that I thought was pretty fascinating. But you got three women on this podcast and one man. So here's yeah. this other one that I found pretty. Yeah. So well, not so not great, great for women, but I think you know. So if you were a woman in the 19th century. Virtually anything that you did could get you committed to an asylum. Yeah. Um, this includes drinking too much tea. 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 Because it has too much caffeine tea. in it. And it could, so it admission could make records. Hysterical. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So admission records from the 1840s from Scotland's Aberdeen Lunatic Asylum contain data on reasons for admission including one woman whose diagnosis indicated a sedentary life, abuse of tea. 
<laughs> so she was a, drinking too much tea. Too much wow. of that. They tea. didn't have Diet Coke then. Or... <laughs> and today, you know, again, the, is on this one. Today is International Women's Day. So happy International Women's Day, everybody. Yay! Yay well, for women! Yay for women! <laughs> Yay That's, for legal rights. I, you yeah, know, I, well, we're getting there. We have come a long way, baby. I mean, things have really changed for women. That's for sure. I was At least from the 1800s or 1840s. Yeah. Some of the, um, I was talking to some of the young people at where I work, and they're all, they're all about how we ruined the planet for them, you know, type of thing. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> the changes my generation made. A woman would not be buying a car, loaning enough working here. You know, you'd have to have well, your permission. Hello. Get... When did I buy my car? And guess whose name is on my car? Uh -huh. Not mine. It's my but husband. You put it there. It could have been in your name. You and also that you're also your generation is also the ones who are trying to pull back on all those rights as well. <laughs> so no, 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 no. give it a take, I guess. <laughs> Because you know, not my generation made a lot of, especially when it comes to women's rights and racial rights, made a, we've come a long, long way than we were. You were I mean, born in the have, '60s when uh, <laughs> segregation and racial injustices were happening. I, well, I'm not saying we started I mean, that. I'm saying we made a lot. They're of still them. happening. You so. would not have been able to get a, a, women would not have been able to get an abortion. I mean, it was my generation. Hey, guess that. what? Women in Texas still can't. I know. They yeah, can't. and you it's trying to get the soapbox there. Uh, I know. Make a, a statement that you know our my generation did do a lot, um, especially water. You know, we cleaned up the lakes and stuff that we definitely. Oh. which water source is that? Well, Maybe is the one from Flint? Flint? Yeah. Flint? Yeah. <laughs> No. Okay. okay or the one that Nestle steals from and sells to other people? Okay, yeah. Definitely your assignment, ladies, for next week. <laughs> this because Flint River was contaminated. You couldn't even get into it in the 70s. You know, long enough, the, the Great Lakes, all, all the factories were just dumping their stuff in there. And so, you know, we did a lot of work. Okay. Cass, <laughs> I need a song of the week. I need a song of the week because <laughs> we've been listening to Hey There Delilah all week long. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, it's a great song in that. Delilah should be thankful that somebody thought that much of her to write that song. Mm -hmm. That's what all stalkers say. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, let's move on. Okay. Uh, Oh, here we go. Do you know this song? If I could save time yes. in the bottle, the first thing that I'd like to do is to save every day till eternity passes away just to spend them with you. Yes. Yes. Great, great, great song. Jim Croce, yes. I didn't a plane crash. Oh, is that well, the, wait, okay. oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> well, <laughs> so this song itself is not creepy, but the facts behind it and the passing of Jim, Jim Croce afterwards are. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry, this, it just seems like yesterday. This doesn't seem like a story to me. I know. <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> I, what? <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, this is Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce. Um, and he wrote this song in 1970 after his wife had just informed him that they, he, she was pregnant with their child. Um, and he wrote it um, to basically celebrate the fact that he's, you know, getting to spend time with these people that he loves and he gets to spend his, you know, life with them. Um, and again, this was in, written in 1970s. Uh, and he recorded it on the the amazing album, You Don't Mess With Jim, which was recorded in 1972, released in 1973. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the single was released in November 1973, just two months after Jim Croce died 
in a plane crash. Yeah. And it became a number one hit uh, posthumously. Um, actually, the third in history to become a number one hit right after. Can you think of the two songs that it came after? I know. I can't think of. <laughs> so Let's the first one was um, sitting in the dock, sitting on the dock by the bay by Otis Redding. And the second one was me and Bobby McGee by Janis Joplin. By Janis Joplin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so obviously I know for our listeners, <laughs> our dad is a very, very big Janis Joplin fan. <laughs> and any road trip that you ever went on with our family, you knew the words to every song by the end of the road trip. <laughs> And our youngest daughter doesn't like Janice Joplin. Well, she was trying to tell. Well, I think we today. and none of us like Janice Joplin. <laughs> we listen to it for hours. I think we started out that none of us. Yeah, like I told her. I said, "You will. You will." <laughs> yeah, we we've all grown to love her a little bit. Yeah. It was playing in the grocery store today when I was um, there, you know, and I was it along worked, with it. It worked. Like she plays like all the time. Okay, I got to tell this quick story before we get going. I, I always got a story for everything, but. I had a customer that called and his name was Bobby McGee. <laughs> so my boss, so well, he called in and they forwarded it on to me and they're like, you know, Bobby McGee wants to talk to you. And um, so I'm like, cool. you know. And so um, I talked to him and I'm like, Hey, you know, about his name. And he's like, yeah, yeah I've heard this my whole life, you know, kind of irritated about it. Well, then my boss said, Hey, did you ever contact this Bobby McGee? And I'm like, yeah, I talked to him yesterday. I said, but he was busted flat in Baton Rouge. He goes, what? And I'm like, you know, he's waiting for a train. He's like, what are you about? he never heard the song. This is how pitiful. Yeah. This, this is how my life. Yeah. Is. That's so, not I'm uncommon. Getting... Most families outside of our own don't and, know Janice. Um, but well. now on the radio, that we we have the satellite radio there. Literally. They play five or six Janice songs a day. You know? <laughs> I'm always like, "Stop, everybody! You know, it's Janice." You know? and then, oh boy! And so I'm like, every time it comes on, I'm like, "So you never heard that song before, right?" He goes, "Well, I kind of heard it, but you know." <laughs> but uh, what does he know? Anyways, and so okay, you know, her today, I'm like, "You, you will, you will like her, and it's just part of, you know, and part of the you family. will love it." Yep. Yes. Yeah. You mm -hmm. you can't deny that nobody came yeah. before Janice, right? There's nobody in front of her. She was lead the pack. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get going. <laughs> um. So hey, this week, oh, uh, we I want to address that we we got a comment about today's topic. In oh somebody, yes, so. Sarah from Michigan, your answer, your your questions are prayers are answered. What am I trying to say? <laughs> we, are we are listening. Sarah, we heard you. <laughs> we heard you. Yes. Yeah. Which Thank by you the way, everyone, please like, subscribe, and follow. Give feedback. Follow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah? Got any questions? <laughs> nope. Okay. Not yet. We are doing a topic on Sarah's question, and it is about the bath bombing, which was the deadliest school bombing in U.S. history, and it was the worst ever um, domestic terror in the United States. Even the Combine, the Columbine School, and Sandy Hook. It happened in a small town of Bath, Michigan, on May twenty or May eighteenth, nineteen twenty seven, by a man called Andrew Kuho. Kiho. 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 Sorry, I mispronounced that. Um, it happened at eight forty five in the morning when all the children would be at school, but. The first bombing went off at his home just outside of town. All the rescue workers were on their way to Kehoe's home because of the bombing. 
And then the second explosion went off at the school and all of the rescue team turned around and went back to the school. And when they got there, there was literally shoes, body parts, and everything on, on wires all over the school premises. Um, it ended up killing 39 children and six adults and injuring 58 kids. One of the children um, had escaped the bombing and um, later, I mean, after all the stuff that had gone on, um, was walking away from the school bombing and Kehoe returned back to the school and called the superintendent over and the postmaster and a retired farmer were out on the side of the road in front of the school. And um, the scrap he had put, um, um, dynamite in his, the back of his truck and he pulled out a gun. And as soon as the superintendent come up to his car window, he pulled out the gun and shot the dynamite and blew up him and the superintendent of the school and the scrap um, shrapnel. Went, shrapnel went and flew back over to um, and it hit the little eight year old boy and the postmaster and the farmer. And their names were um, G. Clio Clayton, and he was an eight-year-old second grader. And the retired farmer was Nelson McFarren, and he was 74. And then Emery E. Hike was 33, and he was the superintendent. The schoolmaster was 33, and his name was Glenn O. Smith. Um, and there was a um, young girl that had stayed home from school that day. And when the bombing went off, they, she, she was a senior and stayed home because of an ear infection and had come back to the school when it, when the explosion went off. Of course, everybody went to the school to see what had happened. And when she arrived, as she was arriving, because when the bomb went off at the Keyhole family farm, um, they all, you know, wondered what on earth had happened. And Bath isn't very far from, I don't exactly know the mileage from Lansing and East Lansing, but the bomb explosion could be heard all the way in Lansing, Michigan and felt. And so they arrived to the school and said that the school had rose up two foot high off the ground and then landed right back down. And um, it had, one of the, the teachers were right in that section and um, she was looking at a boy with his eyes wide open and um, he was pronounced dead, but um, she said that it was the worst thing that she had ever seen. And um, parents that had arrived to the school after this massive bombing had to um, try to find their children and they found them by their shoes, by the makes of their shoes and um, parts, clothing, whatever. But um, it was a very tragic uh, process. And um, at five or six o'clock in the evening that night was the last, the last child was pulled from the school building. But um, for somebody to commit that kind of a crime it's pretty tragic. What was his reasoning for doing it? Did they ever find out? 
And his reasoning was because um, the school was a consolidated school. It had started out in Bath, Michigan, that they had many different schools and every school taught a different grade or every section of Bath. And so they had consolidated one school, which was this school to be um, ten, it, in 19th through 12th grade. Well, no, it was um, one through 10th the first, and then it consolidated from um, uh, first through 12th um, years to come. But uh, in um, once it, it con the school had consolidated, the taxes had increased and Kehoe with his he was on the board of education. Actually, he was on the, he was, he was a, a treasurer of the school board. Yes, he was a treasurer of the school board and um, he got nominated off of it. And he was upset with all of the, the taxes and, and all of the um, expenses after they consolidated the schools. And his, his wife, he had, come from um, a very, he, he, he was a very educated man. He came from, um, oh, um, I'm trying to think of his hometown. Um, it'll come to me. But um, he was educated and he graduated from Michigan State. Um, I have it in my paperwork. Um, um Tecumseh that's what it was he he was raised in Tecumseh Michigan and he had graduated from Michigan State as with an engineer and electric electrician trade um and and after he um after he um graduated from college he spent a lot of time in St. Louis Missouri working as an electrician until 1911, he had a serious accident where he had fallen and um, had uh, closed head injuries, which caused him to move back here to Michigan, um, in Tecumseh, Michigan, um, uh, with his father. He had to move back in with his father. Well, after he would healed and, you know, we don't know how, how or, you know, they say that he was a... Um, very mean, um, unempathy, violent, um, no sympathy person. And he kind of wondered, did all of this come from that fall or was he, you know, like this before he planned this huge bombing? Um, it just... We don't know if he was really mean before the fall. Right. Or... Okay. Right. Right. Right, right. Then they didn't know a whole lot about head injury, so right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So but there knew. were re there were reports before the bombing, though, too, that he had like abused animals or like killed his horses. Um, but was that before the, the accident? This, this the accident was, is when he, he got the he did that, that was after the accident. Yes, he did. The, no, he in his home when his home exploded, he had planted bombs. Three two days prior to this bombing of the school, he had planted he had planted all the bombs. Working, they had hired him because he did so many so much work at the school. He had planted these bombs over a year before this explosion. He had been putting them throughout the school, and um, you know, was he like this beforehand before this thing? But he had married. Um, his wife, he, he met his wife in um, Tecumseh, Michigan, and her name was Nellie Price, which is a well-known name around this area. Um, and he moved to Bath, Michigan later, in, um, a couple years later after that. And... Um, and... 
bought this farm for like twelve thousand dollars. He had bought in a farm, the the farmhouse that he owned, and um, and he lived there for years, and then um, you know, worked as a superintendent or worked in the in the school as the treasurer and on the board, and then um, when he got voted off. His wife had um, been suffering from um, from tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, and he had brought her home two days prior to blowing his home up, and so he had killed her two days before this massive bombing, and um, put her in a wheelbarrow in the chicken coop and then he bombed his house and he tied up all of his animals so they couldn't get loose and then blew up the bomb and blew up the the um all the farming uh buildings and when they got done with when the bombings and everything went off it took two three days to find nelly's body in the chicken coop but um he they said that he had went back to the school and parked his car in front of the school before it blew up so he you know blew up his home and then he went back to the school and blew up the school they he had planted tons and tons of dynamite and there were five, there was 500 pounds of dynamite in the south wing of that school. And if it would have went off. In the north wing? No, no, the north wing blew up. The oh, north yeah, wing, okay, yeah. The yeah. north wing was the yeah. school that blew up, and that's what killed the um, yeah. the 36 the children. South, yeah. Or 39. The south wing didn't work. But um, then it killed six, it killed 39 children and six adults, including him and his wife. So the, it but, killed four, four adults plus them. Plus but only them. half of the school got blown up because the other right. part of the school- It, it didn't go off. It, it right, the South off. Wing, had they had found 500 pounds of dynamite in the South Wing that had not designated, or that, that did not charge. Detonate. Detonate. Designate. All right. Um, <laughs> right. Don't say it. That um, so it. Right. It didn't go off. So um, if that would have went off, the 300 children that were, and teachers that were in the school, it would have destroyed the whole community of children. Right. And, it, right. and that's why and I always he, thought it killed like all the children, but it really only. It I killed like the fourth, fifth, fifth grade classes. Right. For the majority of it but back in like 1927 i think like bath like the adults there was only like 350 ish like there was a, it's a small it was a very but small community there was only like 350 adults in the in the town so basically every family was affected by this right right right, right. So, and and the, the um oldest the the oldest remaining the senior that was um stayed home she is 113 years old and on may 18th of this year it will um it will be the anniversary that would be the 95th anniversary 95th, of yeah. um, so yeah. um but she's still alive yes yes well yeah. as of last year she was she was she was oh. um she was interviewed and she was 113 years old. Oh wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So um but uh he had been planning this attack for over a year. So he had been putting all these bombs into the school over a year's time and when his wife um, when they consolidated the schools and they raised the taxes, he was very bitter 
and angry because he didn't want the taxes to go up. And a year prior to the school bombing, he had gotten foreclosure notices for his farm. And um, they, uh, they uh, think that he- It wasn't, wasn't he, he lost the election for like the city clerk or the town clerk too, didn't he? Yes, he, for the town like treasurer. The town that he was for the um, treasures. And uh, did but, he have a job like a maintenance job at the school too? I mean, the town. That's what that's what I thought too. But um, I think it like I think he was only on the school board. Yeah, he was only on the school board. He worked as an electrician and um, and a handyman at the school. So he was always helping. Okay. All the farmers. And okay, so, so yeah, he was a maintenance guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was just a yeah. maintenance guy and he did their electrical work and he helped all the farmers, you know, he helped, you know, the community. If they needed a handyman, that's what he did. He helped. But these, the, the bombs though too, he had set them up at his home and in both wings of the school to detonate at the, at the like around the same time. He had set them up with like alarm clocks. So that they would go off. Well, he he set the home off, his home off first, and then he was try, he waited for the school. He wa he wanted all the kids to be at the school, so at he school. set that yeah. alarm off. He had that alarm set for the school bombing at eight forty five in the morning. So you know, um, I might be wrong about this, and so maybe like uh, like an urban legend. Um, but didn't he? It was like he put nails in the bombs too. To, I think in his truck. I think okay. that, like I, he filled his truck with like a bunch of shrapnel. So that when he blew up his that's truck, it would yeah. Yeah, and that's what that's what 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 when the, when he took when he his rifle on the front seat, he shot that he had a big thing of dynamite in the back of his truck with all mm -hmm. the shrapnel, and he shot that dynamite and everything went flying, and that's what killed everybody because anybody that was standing mm -hmm. around and. Um, it was said that the superintendent had his foot on the running board of his truck when he blew it up. Oh, wow. He called, he called the superintendent over to his truck to kill him. So it was intentional for him. And, to and I see, and I thought too that mm -hmm. I, um, when he was at his house when his house blew up and or like it was on fire, fire and people were trying to put out the fire and saving the farm animals and all that kind of stuff and he said you better not waste your time you might as well go out to the school and so he that's what I heard is that he like basically told everybody go to the school in hopes that he would kill more people because they'd be up at the school trying wow. to help out over there well you know in some of the I I it kind of confused me because there's so many different interviews and so many different stories. Like some were saying that a, a different amount of kids were killed than they were saying, mm -hmm. you know, everybody had a different answer. And um, in one of the clips that I was listening to, it said that he said that, hey, you guys are my friends, get away from here. Go, go, oh. go away. You know, you're my friends. So he didn't want to kill his friends, but gotcha. anybody that went against him, he was after yeah. them. He, you know, he was, yeah. he was. So he was obviously not mentally stable and his wife was dying. He his, was going to be foreclosed on. So he was just giving up on life and taking as many victims as he could. His right. Wife, his wife's illness took up a lot of their money you know, yes the <laughs> right yeah and, then, right. And, like disaster, and then with the taxes did. going up that's what i think put him over he couldn't afford the extra taxes because of the school and and then i think that mm -hmm. with his wife being sick i think it took a toll on his brain i mean well, and they didn't right. like I'm sure. didn't know a lot about head injuries back then but right no but, right. you know and, and and you kind of wonder i mean it's no excuse for any horrific crime that he did but um you wonder if if he was always insane or his head injury had right. caused you know but it sounds much. like there was 
like a bunch of red flags leading up to the bombing where that would have been caught in today's society in today's, you know like, right today's where, world caught all those things yeah right right do they maybe maybe yeah i'm i'm, I'm thinking what he you know did, but he did it so sneakily you know i mean how do we know that somebody didn't do that to anywhere else i mean well one i think that if somebody was like you know hopefully if somebody was planting dynamite or any kind of bombs in schools for over a year that the staff and you know maintenance people would find it and figure it out before it was too late but well i mean look at um, or if he had anger issues like that to, in today's world they would never let him be running around the school right right doing work you know right i mean the shooting that just happened in a michigan school right. that kid had been right. constantly told that his parents had i mean obviously his parents were we you know not effective and that's not you know they were the part of the problem but yes. these teachers have noticed this behavior for a long right. time like right. he had constant it's erratic behavior right and right. and for him to be able to plant that much dynamite and and because of the wars and all of the stuff in in that air it was so easy to get the dynamite but right he, he didn't work as he didn't work as somebody in the school so why didn't these maintenance men find all of this dynamite in the basement of the school well they probably didn't have a maintenance person back then he was like the, maintenance, was the maintenance person, person. yeah i right. guess i guess yeah, because, and that's because like, they trust you gotta think they trusted him and they you know right. if if they needed something done they called him that's that's right. i guess that's how he got away with it but there was only like really i mean it seems it seems kind of big but there was like what did you say like 300 kids in the school total yeah. from from first grade to through 10th grade, grade or 10th I mean, grade. To, to, yeah. until 10 or 12th grade. Yeah. yes correct through senior year so right. i mean there was you know in some of the surrounding areas like that that's a pretty big school or like a normal school district right. Right. but that's a that fairly small school district too right but and, i mean also going back to his well, their the rest of them i'm sure affected their lives right right but um going back to you know him hiding these bombs for a year yeah. why didn't anybody notice i mean it's not gonna be it's not like he's gonna stick a tnt dynamite you know candle in the open planted them in the floorboards in, or up in the they yeah. were in like sure it wasn't just, area. Right. yeah i'm sure it wasn't just yeah you know yeah. oh what's that over there right, right. stick right. that's weird but they yeah. all smoked back then they probably smoked around all this stuff <laughs> right yeah, that's a weird thing. right well and the thing though too is i mean it's kind of amazing in the fact that he had been planning it for over a year for for about a year and dynamite is very um delicate you know like if it gets wet or you know like it, it's kind of amazing that nothing went off prior to this yeah right so, well i wonder if that's why right. only half of it went off like maybe that right. the half that, went, right. that didn't go off was put first and then it had probably deteriorated and wasn't that, like usable so when time came that's why it didn't go off and I'm sure yeah. if you if, if if you really wanted to get into it, I'm sure that there are police records saying why that didn't designate or uh, ignite. Right. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it, I didn't come across any of that. Well, there there is a museum too in in Bath. Yes, and there time. is in the museum. See the school. Did you go once? Once the school no. was. Um, destroyed they it took two years um to rebuild it re they rebuilt it in 1928 and um the plans for the new school was donated by um, a man called um warren holmes and he was a, a lansing architect and then seventy five thousand dollars was donated by james coe uh cousins he was the United States Senator. Did you guys know that? And and the school was named after him. But um, and then they added uh 
extra curriculum to the school and um mm -hmm. because of I, I i don't get but because of what the purpose of that school was it just didn't do they they um I, they tore it down they i was gonna ask if it's like still the they, no they literally, they literally destroyed the whole school and made it a park so you well, can go you can go to the park and there's a cupola that was on the yeah. original school building and that sits right. right in the middle of the park and there's plaques with all of the children's name on it and people that everybody that had passed, everybody that passed away entering the into the park. park but they did uh, rebuild yeah. the school where it was at no but, right but then right. they ended up tearing years later yeah, they, they demolished it, it. yeah yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it just it was one of those buildings. No, in 1975 they just in 19 they yeah. built it in 1928 and that and, and it was there and um in 1975 they demolished the whole school and made it a park right. but in night and then um then they put a school a new school um right across the street from the park and the school is what has the museum in it. One section of the school has a museum oh. in the new school, but there is a memorial park across the street. Across the street, the yeah. So, yeah. The the and I didn't realize the museum was in the, the it's school. It's in the high school now. Yeah, no. It, there's mm -hmm. a small. It's a small museum inside. Um, inside the school, across from the park. So I said one day I'd like to go over there and and see it. Yeah, you know, be interesting. Yeah. And then I've always been, you know, going into Lansing. If you take the back roads, there's a mm -hmm. huge cemetery. And in these pictures, when I was going through and getting all my information, mm -hmm. there's a huge cemetery. And you pass the cemetery out on Upton Road, and I always mm -hmm. wondered is that the cemetery where all these children were buried or is where is the cemetery where everybody's buried but nelly reed or i mean nelly price um when she when they it took them two days to find her body and um do it they um her family came and got her and buried her in a um, cemetery, uh, on a cemetery plot, and put her, um, gave her back her maiden name. So she was buried in a cemetery plot um, somewhere, probably in Bath. Um, it didn't say where, well, but, so but she was buried. Right, in the by the community, but her, it has her maiden name. Her family wanted her maiden name instead of Kehoe. So she's buried as Nellie Price in the cemetery. And then for Andrew Kehoe, um, when the um, when the bombing went off, they used um, the town hall as a morgue for all of the people mm. to come and um, find everybody's bodies. And um, when the uh, Miss when Mrs. Smith, which was um, the uh, farmer, or I mean not the farmer, but the postmaster, um, they found um, his his wife was the one who found Kehoe's um, torso, and it had his billfold with um, a bank statement from. Tecumseh, Michigan, and it had his driver's license, and that's the only way they found um, Kehoe's. His body had been blown up, and um, wow. they, what parts were left, um, he sat in the um, morgue or in somewhere for weeks before his family members came in and claimed him, and um, then they buried him in a unmarked grave in uh, another town so he's not even buried any so he's either buried in you know he could be buried in lansing he could be buried in the closest town would be probably um langsburg just the outskirts of langsburg hmm. so, 
he's in a cemetery somewhere in an unmarked grave. So. Didn't one of like the final, like one of the final victim, the kids in like 2014, am I remembering that correct, correctly? They had an unmarked grave until 2014 and then community members donated money to get a uh, gravestone put on the child's unmarked grave. I don't know because I, I didn't hear anything like that. I, I, I just had the um Irene Dunham was the the um the longest living survivor yeah and she lived to she's uh, was 113 last year so mm -hmm. and her son was the one who gave the interview but they were asking her questions and she was very emotionally distraught yeah right. um, she was explaining what she had seen and she said that her and her mother were there and she, you know, the building rose foot off the ground and, you know, body parts and everything were all over. And another thing that, you know, I always wonder, like when we first moved to Ovid and we were taking the back roads over to, into Lansing, um, as you were passing Clark Road and um, Upton Road, um, that, that whole, um, telephone wires or whatever those wires alongside the road were always always had shoes hanging from them so I don't know if it was a memorial that somebody would you know family members would always throw their shoes up on them wires but don't you remember as kids going past that and there were always shoes on, on the wires yeah I remember no, that I don't, I don't remember that like, there was always that. It is a common thing to do as a vigil for people who yeah. have died. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. So, but, um, and then. Especially um, since they on, were identified by their shoes. It makes right. sense. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And then um, on May 19th, um, the day after the bombing, um, when they were out at his farm, trying to get everything they, they they found all of his horses tied up that he had taken um wire and tied up all of the horses feet and um any animals that he had they were they were tied into the barn so they couldn't get loose but um they had found a wooden sign out on the um outskirt right on his property line that said um in a wood it was uh a saying that says criminal criminals are made not born. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was his, you know, he said that like he, he, he had, he'd made a sign. He had burned a sign in the in wood, wood that said criminals are made not born. Oh, in other words, you guys, you guys did, did this. this. Make it, yes. Born yeah. this way. He blamed everybody but himself for right. this horrific crime that he had done so you know and, and then you you said this was still ranked like the worst school massacre it is it, it, to, to today's date it still is the worst mass school bombing and um well just the terrorism. school and domestic, and domestic, domestic violence, yes yes like yeah. what i was saying before um whatever when we were talking about this was in Oklahoma, that, right, was, that was at the Columbine School. That was the biggest. No, that's the terrorist was back in 1928. Yes, you know, right, yeah. right. And, and what I remember, and with the the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting that just happened, or not just happened, but in more recent years, with that one, I remember the Bass massacre being mentioned in news stories right. from that right. because it was the most comparable thing right. yeah um, for that because it was young and it was it, it, because it had a daycare and everything else in it i mean they well that was the oklahoma city bobby I, I remember back in that oklahoma now what year would that have been oklahoma been city or something like that that was i was gonna say 92 or 93, no, 93 I remember then then they were playing like on 2020 and stuff like that they were mm -hmm. talking about bath school because right. that had been the biggest domestic terrorism occurring right. 
no. I feel like I don't hear this one talked about at all. Like, well, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. But I think domestic terrorists. Right. And I think a lot of it, like I remember it with Sandy Hook because Sandy Hook was, you, you know, how many, there was like 20 something elementary school kids that were shot right. and killed. And so this is comparable because, I mean, obviously it wasn't a, just an elementary school, but most of the kids that died in Bath were you know, fourth, fifth graders. They were, you know, eight to 10 years old. So they were young, young kids. Right. So, and then I think with Oklahoma City, they had the daycare in the, in the, um, was it in the basement of the building or right. they had a it's daycare like with young kids in the daycare, building. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I think that's why it gets brought up with those because it's younger, younger the kids, young kids yeah. that are dying or it was a mass majority or the majority of the, those that have passed were kids. Right. So. It's still very sad. Yeah. And I do feel like it was something that was brought up with the Oxford shooting as well, but I think that was just because of the Michigan base. Right. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, the two guys that did the um, oops, sorry, the two guys that did the um, Oklahoma bombing were from Michigan. Right. Right. Um, Unfortunately, I feel like a lot of uh, serial yeah. killers are from Michigan. Michigan. They, they have them. some kind of Michigan tie to them. Yeah. I or know. they graduated from University There's, of Michigan. Yes. Yeah. Um, there was someone mm-hmm. just recently who I never knew lived in Michigan. Um, before they like moved out west and started like a murder spree or something like that so it is odd that there's so many people from Michigan who go crazy Michigan, Michigan's a good place to live yeah yeah, yeah. it drives you a little crazy a little angry Maybe. I think it's the weather you have 60 70 degree <laughs> weather one day and then <laughs> negative 20 the next no I don't think it's sad I think uh, you know I, I mean it could be Michigan no. is a beautiful state there, you know, it's it, it's you know, it's kind of crazy to say, but you know, that radon, you know, we are in that section where glaciers we, have caused a lot of radon. Radon. We have a lot of radon issues because of the glaciers. The glaciers, cool. yeah. Well, and then we were buried in water years and years ago, and when the water went away all of this land and people have built their houses, you know, you've got up, you've got hills and up and down. And they say that that's, you know, where the radon collects. I don't know. I mean, I don't know too much about that, but you know, um, Michigan is a, a lot of, could be, it could be that that does something to your mental health. And it's a peninsula. It's surrounded by water. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Crazy. Both the upper and lower are peninsulas. Wow. Pulling a mom right there. Yes. I can't pronounce yes. my words. <laughs> You've been hanging with me too long. Uh-huh. been hanging with me too long. But um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad. If, if there, there's a guy that is, um, that had been working on a, um, documentary so i don't know if it's out yet his name was um matt matt martin and he was working on a um documentary of the bath for 16 years so i don't know if he's oh, got wow. in a um in a show so you can look up his name and see if he if, if we didn't answer any questions or if you're um I did see anything too. more. He might have more in his documentary because I didn't get into his. I was just watching or getting most of my information um, from like newscasts, um, Fox News. Most of it was from newscast people or, you know, and then people that the newscast had interviewed. You know, I'm not going to say it, right? No, I know. I know. I. After I said that, I, I thought, oh boy. Um, but no. Yeah, no, yeah. it's not fake. It's not fake. But um, not, that's, that's not who covered, Fox News. That's who covered Fox affiliate news. Yeah, this, that's who covered the story. 
Maybe because they're out of Lansing. I don't know. There's a local station. At least. Yeah. It's a local Fox station. Right, right. So that's what I'm saying. Harrelson? Did you talk to him? I was just about to say, you guys were talking about uh, water being polluted, and I thought you were going to pull an Alex Jones. <laughs> oh. No. Tired of the fogs, gay. But I did see, too, Amazon had, or I saw it on Amazon, that um, a book called Maniac that is about the bath massacre. Really? I can't remember who, who the author is, but he is a true crime author. So he does oh. a lot of books about, you know, obviously true crimes. Oh. <laughs> so, um, but and I, I can't remember his name, and I don't have a computer next to me to be able to look it up. Right. Um, yeah. That's interesting. I did see that you can get Maniac for free if you have Audible's Unlimited, which I oh. do. But then you can also get the book, a paperback or hardcover as well. Hmm. So yeah. if anybody is interested in, there's a couple different sources for you to get more information. Right. And I like I said, it. look at Matt Martin and, um, and see if you can get into his documentary or something. I see uh, Maniac by Harold Sh Schulter. Sh yes, Schulter? yeah, that's what it is, yep. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Sing. But any questions or anything? Well, you did a good job covering all the details. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good job. It's a very sad event, but- uh, It was yeah. very sad and it was very emotional to think yeah. that somebody in that somebody could just wipe out a whole generation of kids, you know or that, and then to to be that evil to attack children mm -hmm. that are so innocent that had nothing right. to do with this. Um, right. Right. You know, but he, in his right mind, thought that it was that he was targeting their most precious, precious. And he got yeah, right. because that, you know, yeah. there is nothing more than a child, you know, if, if anybody, there was children, so you know, that they are your total life, you know, right. I mean, it, it, people without children, you know, they, they may understand, they may not, but when you have a child, it, you know, and I, I want to say too, I read it, it somewhere too, that I think it was the Hart family, if I'm That's remembering true. correctly. The Hart family, H A R T. Uh huh. They lost all their kids in this bombing, and there were like three or four of their kids. I did, yes, I did, I did see that one family had lost all of their children in in that. Yeah. Yes, I mean, and some people lost their whole family, and and a lot of the people probably that had lost family, um, they moved away. I I did see, I did read about that. That some mo a lot of the people moved away and um or moved to different areas i mean they didn't move out of the state of michigan they just moved out of this air that area and and went on with their life but um they um the they still had lots of family friends that are still in that area that yeah went, right. that had well, friends that like went said, that that everybody in that town because everybody knows somebody there right Right. right, it's just like right. the city, you know, all small, all small communities. Us, our little small community was all affected when Prudence died, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes they were. Yeah. They were. Yeah. They were. It was the town's dog, you know. So you think oh about that, gosh. that really happened in our town. I mean, it literally would have devastated the whole town. Yes, yeah. Especially since, you know, the high school and middle school are just like that where it's a combined two buildings all, yeah yeah like one yeah. big school and you know i have to i think that bath was probably just like our little small community that um when there's something going on in our community we as a community are one and we work right. as one right. if somebody gets sick we, we are there we are we're there for everything and um we support and we work as a team. So yeah, yeah. It, it'd be, yeah. it would be devastating for something like that to happen. And for all of the people that had to go through that and then 
then of course when the bombing went off and they all went up to the school to have to live with that kind of tragedy right for the rest of their lives they, they it would be like going to war you know right, right. Yeah, sure. well, i'm sure there's all, many people like, dealt with lived, they didn't yes i i was just gonna say that they they probably have their whole the, for the rest of their life have probably dealt with that and afraid to go right. to sleep or you know had right. trauma and people back then too ptsd nobody knew no, what it exactly. was right. you know and they didn't have a way to you know help those you know it, it, most people go through therapy to help with ptsd so yeah they didn't have any of that right right so it's definitely a sad sad situation yeah mm -hmm. and because in may will be the 95th anniversary right will probably likely be at least locally will probably be some kind of news articles that are written mm -hmm. about it right and um, i don't but, know if irene you know and mm -hmm. if that irene dunham has um passed on but mm -hmm. as of last year when they interviewed her she was still there but i don't exactly know i mean i didn't yeah find out if I, I didn't look up to see if there was an obituary for her, but I'm right. sure that we'll find out in May when and if she had passed away. What's her name? Irene Dunn? It's uh, Irene Dunham. Oh, Dunham. Because I was like, Irene Dunn is... No, D-U-N-H-A-M. Dunham. She turns... and, she, and she's from East... Uh, um, she's from Lansing. Um... It's the last article I see is she turned 114 on December 21st. So oh, wow. Oh, 2021. So she will be. Yeah. She oh, wow. may make it to the 95th anniversary of uh, this. That's, Which yeah. I don't know if she'd be happy about, but it's going to be, especially if you're the last survivor or like the last yeah. hit yeah. of that. That's got to be kind of a devastation um i don't know and, and all kinds of aspects of that and you know it, one and it, it says that she is the last survivor but you know maybe some of these families that have moved on and away from the area and kind of just dismiss that out of their lives they're they're right. could be younger children that they've oh, they, they, sure these people doing the documentaries are tracking the people right there. trying to find out yeah you yeah. know, well, I'm sure it's not as easy as, you know, you'd think. Right. Well, and then, so 114, though, this is a little She's the oldest topic. person in Michigan. Yeah. I was going to say, She's how old is the oldest person in the world? Uh, 118. 118? Uh, and where's that person? And where's that person? Um, We're a little off topic on that one, but yeah. Well, I know, but it's still interesting because... That's pretty, that's a magnificent life, 114 years old. Well, I um, think she might beg to differ from, a little bit on that. Well, Fukuoka, Japan. I don't know if I have said Fukuoka, that right. Japan? Hmm. Fukuoka, I don't think I'm saying Oh, you know right. what I do? I think I did see that on Good Morning America or something. And maybe it was, what, now that- Oh, 119, actually, 119. And when you say that- Oh, 19. It, um, Maybe Good Morning America or one of the morning talk shows had said, you know, they had him and or her. Yeah, it was a it's a guy, isn't it? I don't know. And and yeah. then that Irene, it had the uh, oldest people. It looks so like she's a at least, but you know, like kind of in one of the oldest categories, at least. Oh yeah. Well, right. I, mean, I don't know if she'd be top ten or not, but in Michigan, yeah. she's officially the oldest person person what mm -hmm. well, well i hope i answered um sarah's questions or yeah sarah would just wanted us to discuss it so i hopefully sarah is listening. happy for this yeah. yeah hopefully she's listening and um it's uh, anybody else that it, was, has it was a big enough explosion that it was heard from lansing that's that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And I think Lansing and Bath are like, well, East Lansing and Bath kind of butt up to each other. They're neighbor like cities because where Matt and I got married, it kind of bordered East Lansing and Bath. Yeah. Um, right. But, but also, also like 15 minutes. 
Yeah. Five, ten minutes. Right. And they're, you know, thinking, with right. that farm, like they're saying that his farm um, is, that uh, it had damaged his whole property, that you would not even know that um, that's where the house was, that it, uh, that um, a neighboring farmer bought his property and um, farms it out. And uh, you wouldn't even be able to tell that it was uh, his homeland, his home property. Wow. So wow. I don't know where, I don't even know where his property was. That I'm was, sure they don't have it marked either. They don't want yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, right. But it yeah. was only, a, it was outside of the town where the school was. So, you know, it, it, right. it was only a couple miles from the school. Oh, it's yeah. in the vicinity of that area. But, and you know, yeah. the names that were, the names that were, the people that were named, it's, um, it, it, it's mind boggling because of some of the people that here in our community, um, are they, Related, related to, right. yeah. Are they related? Right. Was it was in our our librarian? Her name was Hike. You know, was it his father's or her husband's father, grandfather? Right. Um, you know, and then Price is a very well known name here in the area. Yeah. So, were was she related to any of the Prices? Because they say that the she came from a very wealthy family. So. Mm -hmm. Price is kind of a common name in, in any town, probably. I don't know. Yeah. So it was very interesting looking up and but very sad. Yeah. Right. But the, the bombing, oh, I, I wanted to get this clear. The bombing was not what killed his wife. He killed his wife by um hitting her with a blunt object in the back of her head. Oh, so he just, yeah. He okay. killed his wife a, a, the day prior to um, ex, to exploding and like 200 uh, pounds of dynamite was, was what went off in the North Wing or more than 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. But there was 500 pounds found in the South Wing that the had. South side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, he had. He had killed his wife and she had just returned. He had just picked her up from the hospital um, and brought her home. And then he killed her and then um, and then put her in the chicken coop and put the bombs around his home two days prior to the bombing of the school. So on the 16th, they say the 16th to the 16th through the 16th and the 18th is when um, he had killed her and and then put the bombs off. Oh. And she, her body, her body was so unrecognizable that you couldn't even recognize her body. So how did they know she had a head injury? Well, probably because of um, hmm. an autopsy. Probably a fractured skull. Yeah. Yeah, but she's obviously retaining like multiple injuries during the bombing if she's so unrecognizable. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. She was in a wheelbarrow. That's that's how she was found in a wheelbarrow. So I don't know if she was they just said that her body was unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. But okay guys. I think it's that time. Um, All right. Yeah. Good show. Thank you, Denise. That was a good job. Very yeah. informative. Yeah. It was again, good spending time with my family. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, everybody, please like, subscribe, and watch. Comment if you want us yeah. to do another yeah. topic. Yeah. Well, yes. And if, yeah. if you want know to know anything, like. yeah. please follow us on Instagram. Instagram. Family School of Thought dot com. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. gmail.com I'm sorry I'm not going to get that ever right the family school of thought at gmail.com okay. <laughs> yeah okay guys thanks, thanks for being part of our family come again
Bye.